I woke up yesterday morning with uh, the words of a song in my head, and we'll be singing it shortly, and, uh, and I felt the Lord uh, was prompting me to, to use some of it um, to share a message with you this morning. So I'm reading from Psalm 46. Psalm 46, a great favorite of many of us, I'm sure. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountain fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. She will help her at, God will help her at break of day. Nations are in an uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on earth. He makes wars to cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow, the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fear, fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. God, you are our refuge and our strength, and we thank you. You are present with us, and we thank you. We ask, Lord, that whatever reason you may have brought us here for today, you will fulfill it, that we will hear your voice, we will see your face, and we will know that we are loved because we are loved. Thank you, Lord. Amen. As I was preparing for this morning's service uh, last night, the Lord reminded me of two things which I'm going to uh, just briefly share. Um, the first thing was um, our wedding day great thing to remember and, uh, and I remember standing at the front of the, the church as the, uh, the organ bursts into life and uh, the congregation stands and this extraordinarily um, beautiful bride um, makes her entrance and um, about halfway down the, the aisle of course I start crying <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on the front row <laughs> is my twin brother who says to my mum or my dad, oh God, he's crying. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, so I, I tried to pull myself together as you do and uh, suddenly found Veronica standing next to me. And there's just this moment of absolute stillness where you just know that this is it. This is the moment we've been waiting for. The other occasion that the Lord reminded me of was not necessarily a, a pleasant one, but an extraordinary one nonetheless. I was uh, summoned by our bishop in Zimbabwe to a meeting um, one morning, um, which meant an early start at half past five in the morning to travel the nearly 300 miles to the uh, cathedral office. And I remember coming over the, uh, the brow of a hill 
and seeing on the side of a road uh, a huge group of people who began to walk across the road. And, uh, and I realized I wasn't going to be able to just um, carry on my journey. So I slowed down and slowed down until I found myself surrounded by this mob of axe-wielding, machete flying in the air who had surrounded my vehicle and were chanting. And I would love to be able to tell you that I wound down my window and said, Good day! <laughs> <laughs> May the Lord bless you! <laughs> but I didn't. But I do remember just a moment of stillness where you think, this is it. This could go either way. The background story to Psalm 46 is not dissimilar to that. The nation, the, the city of Jerusalem was uh, being threatened and uh, they knew that they would be wiped out if the invading armies were to come and do what they had planned to do. And extraordinarily, there is the psalm that gets sung in this extraordinary situation where an invading force is threatening to come and, and wipe you out. And the psalmist sings the song that if there's an earthquake, we're okay. If the mountains fall into the ground, we're okay. Whatever the storm is, we see the stream and we know that that means God is here. There may be a war, but he will stop it. There may be weapons, but he will turn them into agricultural equipment. And then those words, be still <coughs> and know that I am God. In the stillness of that storm, there was that moment, that brief moment, and they could have chosen either way. And they chose to look at God. And in that moment, they knew nothing else mattered. There are some lovely stories in the Bible uh, which tell the same story. There's Moses with the nation of Israel heading out of Egypt and they're they are confronted by the, the Red Sea and the Egyptians are bearing down on them. And Moses says this most extraordinary thing to the people of Israel. Do you remember what he says in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 and 14? Remember, they've got the sea in front of them, the Egyptian, Egyptian army bearing down on them. Moses says to the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, will never, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. If I'd been in the crowd, I probably would have said, is this guy having a laugh? <laughs> And then there's Job, riddled with disease, who had lost everything, his family, his farm, all the produce, all the, the animals. And towards the end of the, the story of Job, the young man, after the three men had finished, the young man, Eliu, stands up. And what did he say to Job? Be still and consider the wonders of God. And for the next two or three chapters, we have a 
meeting between Job and God, which changes his life. And it started from a place of stillness. And then there's those two lovely folk, Mary and Martha. Martha was busy for Jesus. Mary was still before Jesus. And we know which one got the nod. One of the extraordinarily wonderful things about Crowhurst Christian Healing Centre is that people can step aside and choose stillness for a moment. (coughs) And in the stillness of the moment, the Holy Spirit who has been given to us as a gift from God can show us Father who loves us, can show us Jesus who died that we may live. And suddenly the situation changes. Somebody has said, the quieter you become, the more you can hear. The quieter you become, the more you can hear. The song we're about to sing is a lovely one that we know well. Be still and know that I am God. It's one of those odd hymns that we sing, but who's saying it? I would never want you to think that my singing, Be Still and Know That I Am God, means that I am God, because I am not. It's God singing to you and to me. Be still and know that I am God. And what might he want to say to you today? Does he want to say, I am the Lord who heals you? And how do we respond? In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. God before us who can be against us